So we know that no two smiles are alike. But if that's the case, is there really such a thing as a universally perfect smile? We're about to chat with Dr. Ed Phillips to find out exactly what that means. There's a difference between a textbook in dentistry and a sort of a self-help book. And there are self-help books on dentistry for the public, but they're at a level that's quite written easily, just very basic questions like what is a porcelain veneer and things like that, what's a crown, what's an implant. It really wouldn't give you a lot to really help you guide yourself to really enrich your knowledge about what could be right for you. And so I decided to write a textbook for the public. What it is, it's really the true essence of what goes on in the dental decisions that are made, but it's written at a level that the public can understand. And so uh, it's written in a way that is easy to read, but it'll really enrich their knowledge and they can hopefully go back to their dentist with the right questions saying, you know, I've been thinking about it, I read this book and I need a certain smile that looks like that. And the book will help them understand what is architecturally correct for themselves. A perfect smile is really one that is the correct interpretation of what the patient wants. So if you interpret it and deliver it correctly, then it's perfect. But there are tips to help you. It's actually quite easy. Look in the mirror and smile. And if you look at the corners of your mouth, they should be as wide as your pupils, between the distance of your pupils. So that means if the corners of your mouth line up with the pupils of your eyes, you're in harmony. So that's one thing to gauge. Is your smile right sized for you or is it not? Also, the width of one's nose is very important because the front six teeth should be approximately as wide as the width of your nose. You see the nose projects out from your face from it being flat three-dimensionally it projects forward and it starts to then go backwards. And the front six teeth they lay flat but at the end of them they start to turn. So the turning of your teeth should line up with the turning of your face from your nose. So there's all kinds of architectural elements that are going on. As also as far as the length of tooth it shows when you make the sounds like E or F and things like that. There's a certain amount of tooth that needs to hit your lip and to touch and so the amount of display. So architecturally putting your how thick your lip is to the amount of tooth it shows, these are areas that really will help size things properly for you. You should always continue to go to your family dentist on a regular basis but one of the best tricks is to understand the difference between cleaning your teeth and polishing your teeth. If you want to polish, you have to do something at a high speed and buff it. Once a week, no matter how many times you brush your teeth, and want, you should take some form of toothpaste that has aluminum oxide. Uh, Rembrandt would be, it's expensive, but it has aluminum oxide. It's a polishing paste. And you should buy it from Oral-B, just like dentists have little electric ones that spin, that don't look like toothbrushes that are round and spin and once a week you should polish your teeth to give them that high luster shine and your veneers will look better too if you polish them. Don't be afraid to have the smile you've always wanted.